So I have one zone of sprinklers that runs right along kind of the edge of the property line here, going towards the backyard. You can see one sprinkler head there. And that runs on a straight line on back up to the front of the yard. Uh, so it comes back here and ends. Um, this fence was originally set back just a couple more feet, and there's one sprinkler back there, uh, which is the low spot in the yard. Uh, so water tended to build up and clog up the head and it wouldn't close down and never worked well so i really figured when i put the fence in that i would cap the pipe somewhere back here and just eliminate that sprinkler uh, when i dug this post that's right behind here uh, i did notice i hit the line and thought well if i did crack it or cut it then i'll just cap it further back uh, but what i did notice while i was digging was that there were two lines, so the top one here is a smaller half inch line and that feeds the sprinkler head and the bottom one's a one inch line which is actually a feed line even though there are no sprinklers in the back they ran a control wire and a source or main feed line uh, in case they wanted to add any in the back so what I'm going to do, uh, I'm pretty sure that it's the feed line that is broken, but likely probably both of them uh, I'm going to cap these both. Uh, I don't want to have the cap sitting at the same point. If I ever do anything later, it will probably be with the feed line and tying back in. So I'm going to try to cap it further out here and then cut the zone or sprinkler line back here. Um, so I'm just going to cap these off. If you were actually needing to repair a section, instead of making a cut and putting a cap on, you would want to make a longer cut out cut on each end, put a coupler on, and you'd need enough flex to be able to put in a small piece there. Um, hard part here really is locating and digging. Uh, since I already knew where the line was at, the locating part was quite easy. That can be a real challenge if you know you've got a leak but you don't know where the line is exactly. Uh, digging here in this soil actually with it being so moist was fairly easy. I mean it's not too big of a pile. Um, really not bad at all uh, as far as what tools you could use for the digging the standard shovel is nice uh, also a sharpshooter uh, what I've always heard them called uh, it's just a small narrow shovel we'll just get into there and probably a hand shovel too would be nice when you get down close what you really don't want to do is go to prying against this pipe digging out underneath so I dug by hand with that small shovel underneath uh, if I plan on capping here I don't want to crack the pipe back here or back here from stress. Uh, then as far as cutting, uh, a couple of options here. It'd be hard to get a pipe cutter in there, a uh, little circular, you know, typical pipe cutter. Um, the, they kind of look like scissors that you can use on uh, PVC would probably work. They'll be a little bit difficult to get in there. Uh, a hacksaw, one of the disadvantages is, right, you're going to hit the dirt unless you can get plumb sideways with it here. And of course you can unscrew, much like I did with the uh, copper under the sink. You can take the blade out, slide it through, and then be underneath. You could do that. Um, they also sell, looks like a shoestring, basically bandsaw blade, that you would wrap underneath and then work back and forth. Uh, that would work pretty well here too. Uh, but a hacksaw would probably be, you know, small mini hacksaw would probably be your easiest bet if you don't have a power tool. I'm going to cheat and I'm going to use the basically the Ryobi equivalent of the job max. Um, I'm going to cut these both back here and then when I get up here I want to cut the smaller uh, sprinkler feed line, zone feed line, further back. What I don't want to do is cut into the main line uh, back here. So I'm going to shove uh, just a chunk of metal. I actually have an old license plate and when the time comes I'm just going to shove that in between to make sure that I don't accidentally cut through. Um, I'm expecting a little bit of water to come out because there's still water in the pipe as I cut through, so I may need to scoop out a little more when I get to that point, but that really won't be a big deal. The water is turned off to the sprinkler system, so the only water that's gonna come out is gonna be what's in the pipe. As far as the, this control wire here, um, you could go and plug your sprinkler controller uh, power feed. It's a low voltage, uh, typically they're AC 24 volt, Mine's an AC system, occasionally it'll be DC 24 volt. Uh, it'd probably give you a little tingle here 
if you cut into the wire, but it's not something that's going to kill you. Uh, but if there's any doubt, if you see a power line, uh, maybe proceed with caution. What if it's not the control line? Uh, what if it is somebody buried, you know, an actual 120 volt or higher AC cable at some point earlier? Uh, so just use your head, be cautious, but uh, I know what that is and uh, I'm really not too worried about it. I'm going to cheat here and I'm going to use my little job max. And that's really it. I mean, it's just through it like butter. Um, there's not all that much water in that line. Cut my smaller supply line, uh, my zone supply line back here. Okay. And it sure looks like I didn't get a very split cut back here, so I may come back and try to square that up. The uh, cap fitting will fit a lot better if it's square. Okay, and I'm going to need some room to get that cap physically in there, so I'm going to come and I'm going to cut these a little bit further back here. Uh, another thing I'll mention, there is a thinner wall PVC that is only approved for sprinkler irrigation use. Uh, outer diameter is the same, so your standard PVC couplings and fittings fit on it, uh, but the wall's thinner. Typical PVC for pressure rated, uh, you know, for plumbing is uh, Schedule 40, just like steel pipe. <laughs> This is maybe two-thirds of that thickness at most, uh, so it makes it much more brittle. So when I did bump it, uh, you know, it was prone to break. Uh, I had the, the uh, anti-siphon valve just sprung a leak one weekend while I was gone. Uh, the pipe itself ruptured because it is the thinner wall. And I don't know if it's the contractor that installed this before I bought the house or if it was the prior homeowners that just threw a fit for the cheapest price. When you look at it, it's only marginally cheaper to buy this stuff. It's, you know, a, a two cents a foot on these smaller sizes. So I don't understand why they did that. Um, you know, it's, it's approved by code, but only for sprinklers. But it sure is a real annoyance um, to have such, such crummy pipe that's so brittle and so prone that if you look at it wrong, it just wants to crack. As far as the size of the pipe, you could measure that beforehand. I've got just a cheap Harbor Freight caliper here that was maybe you know two dollars or something. It's a plastic thing. Um, you can measure the outer diameter. Obviously, you can do that now in the whole uh, half inch pipe outer diameter is a little over three quarters of an inch, and I believe that one inch gets around an inch and a quarter outer diameter. Uh, yeah, just slightly over. So then you could go to the store and you could measure. Uh, you could measure the inner diameter here on these. Of course, that's going to be off since this is a thinner wall. Uh, the thicker wall would actually be a one inch, which you can see would be quite a bit thicker wall. Uh, you could also wait till after you cut it. Just use a ruler across there. There's typically enough gap uh, between sizes that there shouldn't be a whole lot of room for confusion. Uh, one inch is a pretty standard size. The next common larger is an inch and a half. There is an inch and a quarter, which might lead to some confusion, but typically you don't see it a whole lot. Uh, a lot of the home stores have maybe some of the fittings, but typically not a lot of the pipe. I'm going to start by wiping off some of this uh, dirt and grime on here. And then we do want to deburr this just a little bit so the fitting fits over. Doesn't take a whole lot of effort. What I've got here is just off uh, one of my little orbital sanders. Uh, I'm not even sure what grit this is. 80 grit, fairly well used. I'm going to take it and I'm just going to deburr that edge a bit. Basically, what I'm doing is just kind of like that, getting the burrs off. And I want to try to avoid as much as possible getting dirt on up into the supply line. You're probably going to get a little bit in there, but. If I had sprinklers going on out this way, getting dirt in there, then that dirt would end up flushed into those sprinklers and possibly clog up the heads. But since I don't, uh, it's 
it's not as big a concern. Uh, if it washed backwards, uh, with pressure changes uh, towards the valve, then it could clog the valve for this zone. I love how easy PVC is to work with, and then the toughest part of this is really getting to it, not dealing with the pipe itself. As far as cost of caps, right, this just fits on the end. The one inch was 70 some cents, and the half inch was like 30 or 40 cents, so very cheap. Um, you know, if you had to buy a whole lot of them, you know, it could get expensive. You know, running the whole system. Really, the glue and the primer are probably the big things. I don't do this often enough. Uh, it's probably been three or four years. My primer's still good, but the glue tends to gel uh, or go bad. And I actually didn't even have any in the drawer. I had to buy some when I bought the fittings. Um, you know, six or seven dollars for a small thing is not bad. Or you can find these in a two pack usually for less than ten dollars. So you're looking at maybe a dollar for the fittings. Um, if you were Again, splicing in a section, you can buy short pieces. You don't have to buy a whole eight-foot stick, but even then, uh, an eight-foot stick's probably five or six dollars at most. Uh, you know, going to a larger size, and the smaller sizes are less. You can buy typically, you know, foot and a half, two-foot sections uh, at the home stores too, the big box stores. Uh, they have them pre-cut, so if you've got a small car and can't get that large piece in, uh, or if you're buying a hacksaw, you can buy the eight-foot section, hack it in half in the parking lot. You know, put two four foot pieces in your car. On the primer, uh, typically we'll take cleaner and the primer, so you can put that all in. Make sure those edges are nice and clean in there. And it does need to dry uh, even before you put the glue on. The PVC is so forgiving, the worst case is if I don't get it good glue joint, uh, you know, cut it off right here, and I'm moving another one right behind it. Uh, PVC is just so easy to work with. So I will definitely, uh, after I get done gluing this, turn the water on, make sure I don't have any leaks before I bury it back, because the, the digging is definitely it's not that difficult digging just one spot, but the digging for this is definitely the bulk of the work. The actual working with the PVC is so easy. The newer stuff doesn't smell as bad as the old. There's definitely some some VOCs or volatile organic compounds coming off of it. Um, small job like this, I don't think you need to wear a respirator. You don't want to be stuck in a confined area breathing these fumes. Um, it'll definitely kill some brain cells in a short amount of time. So, so my primer's dry and you don't want to have puddling of your glue. Uh, it can weaken and make the plastic brittle uh, but you do want a good coating all the way around and it really doesn't hurt to get it on the pipe as well. In fact I believe the directions may say to coat both surfaces. Uh, a little more difficult down here getting underneath, but I want to make sure that I've got a good coat. Because I do not want to dig this up again, unless it's too bad sprinklers in the back. And then I'm going to take it here, and I'm going to push it all the way on, give it a quarter turn, and I'm going to hold it about 30 seconds. There's really no harm in holding it a little longer, you know, say a minute. It's not going to hurt anything. I'm going to take a little is just a little scrap of the old fence that was still sitting in the flower bed. And I'm going to use it to wedge these pipes apart just a little bit. I really don't want to pry on either one of them, especially since they are that thin wall. But I do need a little clearance to get the fitting there and as well to get in there and clean that up on that bottom edge. PVC glue is typically very fast setting. Uh, again, with the low temperature and humidity out here, it's gonna, I know it's going to take a little bit longer. So I'm going to go in the house and I'm going to eat some breakfast. It's still pretty early in the morning. I'm going to let this cure for probably at least an hour, maybe a couple of hours. Um, the bottles will actually tell you larger pipe, and this obviously is not larger pipe. This is still a very small pipe. Uh, increases the drying time as well as uh, the temperature and humidity do. 
Uh, I've had good luck, and I've seen other people do it. And I mean, pressure to it, you know, 15 minutes after they blew it. But I'm going to be a little cautious, uh, especially with low temperature and high humidity. I'm going to give it at least an hour. I'll probably give it two. Uh, I'm going to test. I'm going to turn on the main water supply of the sprinklers, which will be the larger pipe. I'm going to make sure there's no leaks. And then I'm going to run this as zone four uh, on my sprinkler zones. I'm going to run that make sure there's no leaks there before I bury this back. What I don't want to do uh, is have a leak and have to dig it back out. Um, if I don't have a good seal, it's real easy to just cut this off right there, put another cap on. Uh, but it's a whole lot more work to dig the dirt back out. I'll let this sit for a couple hours. I've got the main water supply on, uh, which means this pipe is pressurized. And I'm just going to check under there for leaks. There's obviously water in the bottom from what leaked out of the pipe. And that little bit of we have. Uh, but I feel dry underneath. I feel pretty comfortable with that sealed. Uh, and typically PVC uh, is so good about sealing. It's really not difficult to work with that I wasn't really worried that it wouldn't. So now I've got this pipe coming off of this sprinkler zone that's going to end here. And it's only going to be pressurized when that zone is on. And I have one of these fancy smart, if I can get it pulled up here, uh, internet connected sprinkler controllers so I can turn it on from my phone. I'm going to pull that up here and I'm going to check. And I'm going to have to get out of the way because that sprinkler head right there is going to spray right on me. pressure on down the line there, so I think we can be pretty confident that we're sealed and cured there. Um, another thing that may not be a huge concern if it were typical, you know, Schedule 40, the normal PVC would be getting dirt up underneath, uh, but I'm really concerned with this being the thinner wall stuff, and I'm going to show that in a bit more detail here in a minute compared to typical PVC. So. If I bring my trailer through here and I have weight pushing down, even though it's really not as deep as it ought to be, um, that's probably a good, not quite a foot and a half deep, just a little over a foot. If I have weight up here and not support it down there, the soil underneath, um, that's going to put pressure on that line back here. So I'm going to put some soil in. Sand would be really great. Uh, it'd definitely settle down in there underneath. But I'm just going to, this is heavy clay, but I'm going to put some in, I'm going to water it in, make sure it really settles up underneath there and supports it from the back side. And then I'll just finish burying it up and I think we can call this done. So I wanted to take a minute to visit this thin wall PVC that was used uh, in the sprinkler installation. This is only approved for French drains and sprinkler lines, not approved for potable water. Um, be drinking water. It's not approved for sewer use only, and unless they've updated the code to take this away, was only ever approved for uh, sprinkler irrigation and uh, French drain. So French drain, if it gets a crack in it, you know, obviously the idea is water's going into the pipe to go away, so not a huge deal. Uh, for sprinklers, this is a huge deal, not only for my setup where there's a trailer, but this stuff is so flimsy by comparison. Uh, if you look at it wrong, if you bump it when digging, UV tends to break it down. If we look at wall thickness, um, and you could probably look up the specs, I mean I come up with something like a sixteenth of an inch, not quite two millimeters thick. I mean it's it's just absolutely tiny stuff if you can see that there. And if I measure standard schedule 40, uh, I come up with a full quarter inch thick um, you know, a little over three millimeters, uh, three and a half millimeters. I mean, it's definitely a lot stronger. There's no real advantage cost-wise for raw material because the thin wall is so much less common, uh, you know, as uh, production scaling goes and availability. The standard thickness Schedule 40 PVC really is uh, not much more. I mean, we might be talking a penny a foot or something along those lines. Uh, as far as cutting, there is only one advantage there. If you've seen uh, sprinkler guys doing this, it looks like kind of like garden shears. You can cut this a whole lot easier than you can this. Um, but PVC in general cuts so easily 
if you have a hacksaw, um, you know, my job max saw there that I used, uh, it cuts very easily. Um, you do have to clean up the burrs when you use a saw like that versus if you use the shears, there's really not as much burring. But if we look at this real quick, and this is just an old chunk of pipe that I had from some, I don't know, prior project. If I take a piece of sandpaper, and this is obviously full of burrs, this is all you'd have to do. I mean, that's basically it. I mean, we're talking about 30 seconds at most per joint um, to clean up those burrs. So we're not talking a, a huge difference in labor costs. So if you ever have a choice, uh, whether doing it yourself or hiring a contractor to put in a sprinkler system, do not let them use this thin wall. You will just be fighting it. If you look at it, if you touch it, uh, if you even think about bumping into it when you're digging, it's going to be a problem. And I'm going to show back here. This is required by code in most uh, municipalities. And this is a siphon break. So what it does, uh, water pressure comes in here. And there's actually a, a diaphragm gasket in there. And the pressure of that water holds that shut. If the city ever loses pressure, that will break keep any water in the sprinkler system from heating up. Let's say there's thermal expansions and air heats up. If the city lost water pressure that was off, that now contaminated water from the sprinkler system could be pushed back into the city drinking water supply. So these are required by code. Uh, this sprinkler system was in before we bought the house. I talked to the guy that put it in. Uh, he thought it had been about two or three years before we bought it. So let's say at most this is 13 years old. Three or four years ago, uh, so maybe the pipe was 10 years old at most. I was going to the farm one weekend and the pipe here just ruptured. Uh, spewing water everywhere, the wife found it. Luckily, there's a shut off valve uh, back by the street. I mean, we were able to shut it off. Um, I dug all the way down and stood at this splicing there to get that buried in the ground. I wanted to have the thicker walls to the PVC. So, again, you know. 10 year old pipe, just a little bit of UV on it, maybe it got bumped slightly, and it just simply ruptured one day out of the blue. Nobody around it didn't touch it. So, this thin wall stuff definitely long term is not a good idea. It's just so much more, so much more from the UV exposure. I could just squeeze it with my hand and it squish. Not a good idea at all. So, if you have a choice, if a contractor wants to use a thin wall, pay just a Two or three percent more on the job, get the thicker wall pipe. If you're doing it yourself, get the thicker wall pipe. You will just be fighting this thin wall anytime you look at it funny.